Okay, so I think you guys are keeping up with me pretty well here so far. And I'm going to um, introduce sort of another general principle here. You'll notice that the video name that I just gave this last video, I called it How to Use a Pre-Built Grasshopper Definition. So it's probably appropriate for me to explain what a definition is. A definition is basically the program or the algorithm that you're creating in this space. So right now they're just components that are dropped into a workspace. Technically, it's not really a definition yet. Once I you know, create something with it, it really kind of becomes a, a bit of a program or a definition. So here's what we have to do. And I'm gonna walk you through this very, very simply. Um, the, the first thing I'm gonna do is create this box two point. And then uh, just to show some contrast, I'm going to stop you all from following along with me. And I'm gonna do the box rectangle separately, okay? So box two point being very, very simple as it is, it requests a point parameter. And, and I say a point parameter because the input value is a uh, positional or coordinates based bit of information. When I say bit of information, that is the parameter. So um, notice the icon, right? It shows this little hexagon with the you know point icon thing or point symbol. Um, those are located under the params tab. However, these params are empty. You should know that. These are empty housings for passing information. So if I drop this thing in to the workspace, this one right here, the one in the top left corner, it shows up as orange. And the, the, um, the, the tag being orange basically just says, I, I don't have any information, so I can't process anything. And in order to, to generate some information, you would have to either give it a point in space done by clicking on the point element and placing it somewhere in the Rhino model. And then in Grasshopper, you right click the element and you say set one point and it activates the Rhino workspace and then you click that point right there. And it creates that little red X on it that point parameter now becomes gray, which means it's active. And it has geometry. And more importantly, it has the right geometry because if it's the wrong geometry, it'll be red. Um, if I wanted to uh, create a second point somewhere, um, I can basically just use this and copy it and say Alt, pull it this way pull it out here and then I'm going to sort of pull it up into the Z plane so that it's, you know, it's actually somewhere else in space in all three dimensions. But notice how that one now is not designated with a red X. That means that it doesn't exist in Rhino or in Grasshopper, sorry. So um, Grasshopper now I have to create a second point like this and then reference the second one with set one point and click on that. Do you guys need a moment to catch up and get those two points in space and referenced? Or are you keeping up pretty well? I got no response. I got one head nod. All right, I'm going to come by and make sure you guys are keeping up. OK, next up. Oh, did you need help? Is that all Grasshopper is, just inputs and outputs? That's it? Basically. It's not sculptural. So basically, you're programming, um, you're going to be programming the geometry, and then you, you bake it into Rhino, where you can then like sculpt it and you know, break it apart and do stuff like that. Okay. Um, so, so basically, um, I moved mine so that it, it has been relocated in all three dimensions. Otherwise, you're not creating a box, you're creating a rectangle, right? If you just go left and up, you're just creating a rectangle. That's 2D. So we want a 3D move, three dimensions, move that line, uh, move that point. So here's the, the next um, critical element about Grasshopper is that uh, an input is not actually input into anything until you connect it with what we call a wire. Okay, and those wires, I'm going to zoom in really close here, the wires are found by pulling a, a connection from that little white node thing um, to the other white node thing. So if I pull from this first point, 
And if you click it here, uh, it, you'll see that it's that bottom left one. It turns green. Just want to highlight that real fast. Um, but if you pull from this and you drop it on A, that's going to create a wire connection between the two. Secondarily, um, that's my first point. I need to connect my second point by just dragging it from here to here. And there you see you've got a box. Let me just do something real quick. ZS, my camera's getting all screwed. All right. <clears throat> so um, why is this so powerful, right? We've been doing a lot of these modifications back and forth with really complex geometry. Um, and I'm not saying that complex geometry becomes easier in Grasshopper, that's not true. But um, the, the important part here is that if you develop your definitions with uh, a high level of, of care, then you have the ability to basically just kind of flex the thing into the, the position you need it or, or the state that it needs to be. Uh, like I did with those analysis tools that I showed you. So now with this box, I don't have to do the move face command or I don't have to control shift and click on that face and then push it down or do a Boolean split or anything like that. All I have to do now is just move this point with the gumball. Move it down, move it over, back. So it's an incredibly powerful modeling tool. It, it just it gives us a great deal of flexibility from one to the other. Why, why is it that like you don't have to select it and change your points, or is there like a different way? Because like when you try to drag it, like you're choosing a selected one. Um, if you click this, it becomes green. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's, that's important to know because this is a good way of like troubleshooting which geometry is which. And um, so like with that definition that I created, uh, this one right here, when these are on, that's the element. And you know, if I don't quite know what the, the written description is here, it says mull B-rep or glazing B-rep. I tried my best to describe them well when I created the tool. It says B-Rep of glazing panel and B-Rep of mullion system. Um, if you can't really figure out which one is which and you need to bake it so that you can put it into your rendered model, just click it and it'll tell you, you know, that one is the mullion one. This one is the glazing one. Does that make sense? Yeah. Turn those off again, go back in here. All right. Um, so, so here's what's really kind of cool, right? And this is where I want you guys to all just kind of stop for a moment and just watch as I do this, the exact same thing, um, but just with a slightly different tool, okay? Um, here, uh, well, actually, let me show you this. I have a geometry that lives here, and I don't want it to live there because I'm going to create a new geometry that's kind of in the same place. So I can turn them on and off. And you can turn them on and off by selecting the geometry, right-clicking, and turning off this preview button, and it hides it. Or you can select all of the elements, including these points, and I can middle mouse click button, and then click this little blind guy here to disable them all. Unfortunately, um, the geometry in Rhino doesn't hide with it, so you have to use your layer control to turn stuff on and off. Um, again, we'll talk about layer control when we get back into that definition again. Um, still on fundamentals here. Any other questions about that? Okay, here we go. So with, uh, with Grasshopper, um, if you're developing a definition, it's easy to move backwards. Basically, right now, I know I, need a mo I know I need to make a box. So I just read the description of what it tells me I need to create in order to generate that box. So I need a rectangle and I need a box height. They come in different, um, different types of uh, geometry. So now this one isn't just asking for two points. This one needs a base rectangle and it needs a numerical input, right? Box height right here says one locally defined value zero to 10. So that's numerical. Um, so I've got to create a rectangle which is found under curve and under primitive 
and under rectangle. And again, guys, I don't want you following along with me. I just want you to watch and understand. The rectangle one has obviously a lot more input values. Um, so the base plane is just where it is. The X and the Y value are numerical magnitudes to how big that rectangle is. And then the R is a radius for the fillet edge. So you can create like a rounded corner on your rectangles, much like you see in our models that we've been doing, right? Rounded corners, right? Okay. So. Uh, the cool thing is they come preloaded with information. So if I just pull this rectangle into the R, well, it already starts to create it, right? Um, the X, the Y are there, and that's what's predefined. And then the H has a predefined value of 0 to 10, right? So right now these are, and I'm not going to, you don't need to know what a domain is, but a domain is a range of numbers, and it can, you know, create centerization and go both ways, you know, up and down at the same time. That's what it's used for. But for most functions, particularly the ones you're going to be using in this class, all you need to give it is a number. And that's what you're seeing here, right? These right there. I gave you static numbers, and there's a very good reason. Um, but the, and that reason is because when you use a slider, it has to process every single step along the slider. And when a definition is big, it takes a long time. So um, this is really simple, so we can use the slider and it's gonna look good. So really, um, a slider is just you know, a range of numbers that you pull it back and forth to pick what you need. So if, if I double click on the space, or if I go to params here, um, you can grab a slider up there. You don't need to know that part yet, but anyway, I'm gonna create a slider from zero to 10. So zero less than 10, that creates my number slider. Don't worry about this so much, guys. I'll, show you how to do these in greater detail. Hit enter, and then um, X, and then I can copy, paste, that one's going to be Y, and then copy and paste, and this one's going to be H. Okay, so it totally disappeared because my values for X, Y, and H are zero, so it doesn't exist. Um, so once I pull these up and then pull that up, you can see the rectangle is starting to grow. And then I can pull the height up, and now my rectangle is growing even more. So two of exactly the same types of geometry, but with very, very different parametrical inputs. You guys see how awesome this can be yet? I know you're just faking it. But... Um, Here's, here's something that I, I feel like I must state at this point, is that right now, this doesn't seem like it saves any time. Because you're like, dude, I already know how to do a box in like two seconds, right? You guys could do a box way faster than it took me to do that. Um, it's when you start compounding these things and creating algorithms with them that it becomes a huge time saver, right? So that Mullion system, that whole command is, is a surface that gets subdivided and then it gets uh, reduced by, by doing an offset curve on it. Then it gets subtracted, then it gets extruded, both of them get extruded, and then it gets uh, Boolean unioned. And that's like, I don't know how many was it, was it? It's like eight steps, something like that, that you would have to do every single time for every single instance that it would occur. So the value really is, you know, I could have all of these surfaces be different sizes, and I can just apply this to every single one of those surfaces all at the same time. Hugely valuable knowledge. Any questions? Okay. So um, here's what I'd like to do. I want to uh, move you into actually applying a grasshopper, soft, uh, a grasshopper definition to your model, okay? So find, take a moment while I'm saving this video to find an, an opening, a simple opening, not one of your craziest ones, um, and then, and then uh, just, just eye it out, I guess, and, and hang on for a moment. <laughs> 